Welcome back to Let's Play Hand of Fate. In this episode, we'll have a last run at Endless Mode, as there are two things I want to try showing off. The first is the Iron Hunger Fate. Iron Hunger, although I showed it off in a bonus video, is unusual in that it's the only fate that adds an extra resource to the game. So I thought it would be nice to show off a little bit more about how it interacts. Iron Hunger is a little bit weird, because sometimes you get really lucky at the beginning and you can go for quite a while, or you get very unlucky and immediately get hungry. The other thing I want to try to show off is a bunch of the items that I may have seen in bonus videos but couldn't show off on video, and also some items that may still remain to be seen at all. There are very few of them left, but there are still a couple. So with that, let's go. We can hope that, as each card is unveiled, as each new concept is explored, that we learn something about ourselves. Let's see, Armor of Cold, we know, we've worn it. It is light armor, and I might get better armor later. But its cold effect could be useful. So let's smelt the old one. Really? Is that what you're going to do? Oof. The white minotaur already. I don't necessarily want to fight the white minotaur, but he does offer equipment. Now here we have an interesting choice. The mace could in fact fetch us uh, probably quite a few iron ore. But it's also a little bit of damage upgrade. And then we also have the issue that if we sell it, um, we might get better equipment later. But I haven't shown it off too much, so I think I'm going to keep it and uh, get rid of the blade for now. I don't care for the collector, though. Okay, I'm glad I skipped that card. The Elder Lizard is not really great unless I have the ore for it. And it's a bit of a mixed blessing in the Iron Hunger Fate. Collector? I changed my mind. I'm actually going to visit the Collector because using this weapon in the fight made me realize I really don't like slow weapons. Maybe not the best decision. But I'm going to use the gold instead. But not that. I do not know who created You want my armor. I merely perfected. Uh, not the best of trades. Since my next armor might not give me any uh, iron ore, but we are going up to a shop. I'll just have to live with light armor. And we do have over 200 gold. Nicely in the iron, uh, iron hunger fate, I didn't notice that sometimes the gaining a food gain card actually gives you equipment. And Mithril will replace our armor nicely. Yeah, we're back to the default light armor. I don't think smelting this one will give us anything. Oh, it will. Default does, does work. Food will be useless. Healing wounds will be far from useless in case we're going to starve for a while. Well, let's take a look at what we have. Forbidden Armor is not great for us since we want to be able to heal. The Dragon Helm 
could start the chain of getting the dragon relics, and innocence is useful. Golden mask could also be useful, but I like the dragon helm. It might take away uh, that effect of uh, getting equipment, though. This wasn't very very well documented when I want to research it. But we want the Dragon Helm. I think this is what we're going to do. Interesting choice. Innocence is absolutely what we want. Are you sure that's the right approach? And now we can just buy these for food. Hard to believe, but it is actually possible to be too well armored. What will you do with that? Yeah, 11 iron ore is just about the best that we can get, except for one item, which gives 12. We'll also buy this and get four. That's the name of the game. Um, what be, What is our food becomes more expensive in shops, and we need to make sure that we have equipment. Let's take a look. Berserker Ring uh, gives us health. That could be useful. Ring of Peace could be useful. We've had it before. I don't know how many blessings we'll have, though. A new ring, the Ring of Wizardry, giving us health for artifact uses. And the Bashing Ring. These are not necessarily any the best, but the Berserker Ring could be good. You think that will help you? Ring of Peace is not nothing either. The Bashing Ring, I'm not entirely convinced. But if we're going to get the Master Ring, we might as well buy as many rings as we want. Choice. And now something I wouldn't normally do. But I think it's try to be... A real asshole. We'll take the hero's belongings. We'll actually take the Viking blade. Bye bye, innocence. It was worth showing you off. As pleases you. And we will lose max health. The deeper you go, the harder things become. Unfortunate curse that I want to try to get rid of. Death. Not you speak the of the true death. The All right. Oblivion. We've lost 50% health. Game where your peace begins again. Ah, Devil's Wager, hello again. Skulls and dust. Our max health doesn't matter. We're probably going to lose some gold overall. But now I get to show off the weapons. Not bad. The Viking Rage. Seems like it does more damage. And our shield bash does damage, which is very useful. Better as we go up in combo tiers, and the enemies fall. All in all, a very nice weapon. We are losing gold from getting healed, but it's not the end of the world. Perfect. Master Ring is kind of what I wanted. I didn't get to show off Eye of the Storm. You can summon a Swirling Vortex centered on you, but I tried it. It's not as effective as other artifacts for me, even though it has nine uses. Mage's Mask could be nice, but I'm betting on the Dragon Artifact in the long run. Another curse. 
more than anything, I am Dealer Spite is bad. I want the priest Do you soon. The wheel turns again and returns us to the world in order to experience afresh all that has happened. Ah, welcome back to Captain Buccanera, back from the Warlord Fate. Still to this I can get food, gold, or information from him. And will not go willingly through them. And information is what I want. There is nothing on this map that I want except for the mage. Let's see what the mage has to offer us. A chance to buy more food. You must be relieved. All right, nothing great in the artifacts. The dragon ring could be good. Plunder's cap is helpful, but it also what will you do with gives that? us decent ore. And I do want the dragon ring, so is there something I can sell extra? Nope. I have, in fact, got everything I want. So the dragon ring will have to wait. Oh, it's the helpful priest. Excellent. I've been keeping the food for this. We're a little bit further down in the dungeon, unfortunately. But I still managed to get a huge success. Unfortunately, Dealer Spite is going to be very bad for us. The gods look upon you favorably. It takes a very special person to walk through this door. You need to have lived a life that provides enough meat for our deck. Wheel of the gods, turn, turn, turn. Give us the items that we should earn. Left to persist. I don't want to show this off, but I think it's worth showing it off a little bit. From the How lucky are we? Somewhat lucky. Actually, very lucky. Two of the dragons set. To go. I do hope you find something to eat. Soon. We will first see if we can feed ourselves. Finally, an opportunity to eat. Ah, uh, yes, we do. All right. Bye-bye, Plunder's Cap. Plunder's Cap is nice for us, but I'm going all dragon right now. You think that will help you? And Alchemical Silver. No, I actually... I do need to keep some of my gold for Holy Patronage. I have far less respect for your decisions to come here given the places you've been on your way. Oh, shush, dealer. Holy patronage can go up in price, but as long as I have uh, fewer than four blessings, so three max, I can get an extra blessing. I don't think I need the cooldown reduction, but I do hate ranged attackers. Both are fine, really. I just want the blessings. Ingenious. Don't Trading post is actually beautiful. Since we never need food. We could get helmet, shield, or armor. Shield is more like what we want. We've tried pain. Pain is nice. And I like I like doing damage. But being able to kill regular skeletons could come in handy. Just gonna check something quick here. I think I am actually going to keep pain. It is marginally better because it can kill skeletons, but will kill them quickly. And the court's not affected by the skeleton king shield. So yeah, I briefly glossed over it, sure but you battle practice is kind of interesting in endless mode. Um, and actually, I guess in other dungeons as well, you can only use it to fight against enemies you've encountered and unlocked. And we haven't unlocked or seen the Lich yet in Endless Mode, at least not on level 9.
Ah, an encounter we haven't seen in person. This is probably the alchemist. The one card that I never actually visited yet. Yeah, lava golem innards. I don't have 50 ore though. 50 ore would be nice, but then I wouldn't make a potion. The maiden can't bless me, but she can give me longer life. Ah, the lovers. Maybe they'll give me some rings. I thought I had that. Maybe that's what got lost at random. You know what? Sure. It might be time to get one of these. Attacking faster or throwing knives, you know? You think there. That, will help you. that way, at least, we do have an artifact in our inventory. I don't necessarily want to use it, but at least future artifacts can be turned into iron ore. Hello there, Kraken. My old friend. sure you are grateful for that. Mortal whimsy. I tried once. Realized it wasn't great. Randomly changing to another weapon can be great or can be horrible. Fortunately, I like the Viking Blade. And the Mortal whimsy, I believe, gives quite a lot of iron ore. Ten. Now I have a choice. I admittedly would love to have the Kraken's Wrath mask and the sword together. It's a nice combination. But I still think I'm going for all dragon. So let's try melting this. As pleases you. For nine. Local peasant is a great example of why food is an Easy come, easy go commodity in Iron Hunger. I want equipment that I can smelt. Mace is not really worth it though. But this is the prize. Ah, uh, Holy Forge is one of the cases where I could pay 75 iron ore, the equivalent of the metal ore card. But I don't have 75 iron ore, and that's a steep price to pay for a hammer weapon I don't necessarily like. Of course he curses me. I am sorry. Okay, cannot sell anything is not a problem for me. Let's see what we got. 
Ring of Experience starts off small, but uh, health after every successful combat will be useful. Ooh, Fate's Folly could have been nice. Do I want more gold? Maybe. Thirty-two gold. I don't think I'm gonna get it back per se, but at least I get some iron ore. Interesting choice. Alchemical silver gives six iron ore. That's not too bad for um, artifacts. Artifacts usually don't yield too much for iron ore. Another curse on the table. Let us see how you deal with this. We will continue to draw closer to a resolution. Ah, nice. Metal ore. I wanted to show this off. Mind you. And Encountering the metal ore gives us a nice little 75 bonus. This point, it's a matter of staying alive. You're not guaranteed to, of course. But right now, I can afford to do other things, like get this occult ring to inflict more damage for every curse. And this ring of poverty, which I can't sell right now, what will you do with that? but it will still stack with other rings I have. And there we go. Dragon armor is here, everybody. I don't need Mithril anymore. But I also have these rings, and I love rings. You think that will help you? Just to show it off. The number of rings I have right now is, um... Obscene. 13, and it can get even higher. Soul Gem is fantastic. Now we want to remove a random curse. Maximum health is, um... Ah, Deadly Ratman. Maximum health is nice, but chance at removing a dealer curse is good. Yeah, we're good. Let's look at the Ring of Gluttony again. 50% more healing from consuming food. We can see if that works with iron ore. And either way, it's one more ring for the pile. Now let's hand over the gold. See what equipment we have. Okay. Sure. I'll take Inferno Potion, just because of the dragon stuff. I'll smelt Mercenary Contract for seven. Pretty good. So every time you get the Soul Gem, the food requirement increases. You'll probably only see this in Endless Mode. What order are you going to get rid of? Deadly Bandits, still not what I wanted, but hey, it's something. All right, we've earned this Priest. Dealer Spite goes away. Loose Pockets goes away. I could get rid of some of these, but they're not a huge problem. Corrupt Healers goes away. Tainted goes away. Don't care too much about these. They're a matter of course. Now let's buy some of these again. Critical Strike, Very nice. Will of the Gods, Arcane Knowledge, all of them will stack with uh, one of my rings. No, move speed is still useful 
and I could just do straight up damage here. Enormous shield is not quite what I'm after. But it does give seven iron ore. 148 gold can get some really nice blessings. I don't care about Hedman's blessing. Holy touch, I could get back. This could be good. I don't have any official word that High Constitution interacts with iron ore rather than food. Many of these blessings are too good for the likes of you. But I do want to stack blessings right now. In case I lose one and to get effects. Ah, the rat cleaver. Sounds like it could be good. And you know what? We've had the Viking blade a while. Killing ratmen more efficiently. Sounds nice. Time to change equipment. Are you sure that's the right approach? What do you got for me? The Kraken Claw. And Scorching Zeal. Great power often comes at great cost. If I know anything, I know that. Detonator, I don't think I'm going to use. But you know what? Let's get it in case I can show it off. Interesting choice. Finally, the Kraken Claw is not the Rat Cleaver, but causing damage around the target could be nice. So for now, we'll take the Kraken Claw. Now, this is the same result as if we had 75 iron ore from the middle ore. We will give it to her. Ore gain could be good. Hey, look, the Iron Hunger Helm is back. I want to see if the Shadow Agent Helm um, has anything here. How much iron ore is this worth? Five. I'm sure you are grateful for that. These were sadly not very good gains, but you kind of got a feel for how the Elder Lizard works. Cursed luck. The deeper you go, the harder. I don't like this one, but neither is it the end of the world in all situations. Do you understand what? What curses can I remove right now? I do want to remove cursed luck. It's a pain otherwise, and everything else here is, well, too expensive, but not really a problem. Curse. Ouch. Ooh, this is a new one. Okay, what have we got? More than anything, I am proud of my array of curses. Uh, I have a lot of ring. That's gonna hurt a lot. Think about the way we play this game. Jesus. You continue to die, yet we reset. 60 health is no joke. Time. One has to wonder how it is possible to truly lose. Fortunately, Ghost of the Sea is here to give us something or other. The ghost doesn't quite know what to do with us. Ah. That is one of my favorites. That is awful. That is awful. Absolutely awful. And I'm getting to the healer the as fast as I can because it is extremely lucky that it, the healer is there. It's time to get me to a healer. I am so extremely fortunate the healer came back uh, right away. Otherwise, I might be dead. Yeah. Skin rash, bye bye. Infected rings, bye bye. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, hey, Fortitude's Breath is here. Not as good as pain. 
Food and health are so fundamentally linked that this sort of spell is elementary. Ring of Fulfillment, I'm not sure I've shown it off anywhere, but it makes food suddenly useful. Marginally so. Not so great. I do have a good weapon for fighting them, but I am not trusting my luck with uh, these so much. At least, I have the ability to ignore their shield. Plus, Lizard Eater is becoming very beneficial in the ability to help me stock up on health. Yeah, good. In a past endless run, this was pretty bad. Since the, uh, yeah, the, the King of Scales is very difficult to deal with here, especially accompanied. by all his lackeys. And this is extremely hard. You can't see all the other lizard men and they'll probably get attack. Quite frankly, what I'm trying to do is just get, get rid of the lava golems if I could by walking around. But I want, I absolutely want to attack the king without getting hurt. There we go. Immediately, that gives me a little bit of breathing room. The accumulated damage got the Lizardman. Thank you, Dragon Armor. equipment. Oh, the helm and the ring. When he came to play the game. The oh, good. Dead have plagued these lands. Dragon armor is still better. Thankfully, there exist tools for that. Their... Angry mob is starting to appear. Anger rises. Anger without form or direction. We've never actually met the angry mob and had enough food to give them. So let's see if they're happy. That's right. You give the angry mob enough food, they're very happy. Useful. I am Nasty. As much as any game. Oh, blacksmith's gratitude. Excellent from the warlord fate. I will absolutely pay gold for equipment. Gain card plus one gold to health is sort of okay. Scavenger's cap, well, it's food. But I think now that we lost our dragon helm, time for the explorer's helmet. And I can just ignore the cursed treasure. Another pile of treasure. Hey, and apparently it was good judgment to ignore the treasure. So in a run, I will probably never ever pick the cursed treasure, and the rest of the old gods might keep me going unless the blessing gets removed. Weapons, uh, including one I actually wanted to show off. I think the Kraken's Claw, Kraken's Wrath Claw, Kraken Claw has reached its end. Blood Crescent is very nice. What will you do with that? Gather enough protection and you may become strong enough to challenge the gods themselves. So the Blood Crescent is nice, and you can't see it because I'm killing things very fast, but anything on the ground gets finished in one hit. 
Now there is limited utility to this, since court members can never be finished, so it'll never work against them. But it'll work against other things. And with one, insta-kill on just about anything. Of course, you do want to manage your health carefully, so don't just kill absolutely everything with that. Oh, I don't like this at all. More curse? More blessing? I made that a little too useful. Powerful. I will have to rebalance that next time. Manageable. How abundantly blessed you are to reach such heights. Truly, the gods must favor you. I'm just checking. That is an achievement I've long waited to unlock. Pure enlightenment. Possess ten blessings at once. We're not doing too badly. I appreciate your ingenuity. I look forward to seeing how you approach this particular challenge. That's going to be tough. Whether to be surprised that you're clumsy enough to have accumulated ten curses, or impressed that you've done it and still survived. That's another achievement I note. Created. I can help. I just have to make do. We remove this. Remove Corrupted Soul, more survivability, and what do we have left for blessings? Toxic Blood. Many of these blessings are too good for the likes of you. There are no more blessings, everybody. I have as much as I can. Twelve blessings in all. That's all there is in the game. What gear do you have for me? A new ring. Ring of punishment. What sort of man would trade the blessing of the gods for material wealth? Not me. Not yet. When I can get the explorer's ring. Food bonus, especially since it's getting me max health right now. It's nice. Way, you know. I actually want to see the shop. We're getting ambushed all the time, but it's still okay. Interesting choices here. Order's Desire Helm is not really great. Depth of Night could be useful, but to be honest, if I end up drawing the King of Scales in an encounter, it will hurt. Night's wings enfold you even here. Good fortune surrounds you with the shadows. At this point, I think I want to go to Frost Fang. Blood Crescent is okay, but the ability to freeze things. Well, it's also just time to move on. Interesting choice. I get to show something off now. In the portal room, you actually have a portal. Which means every single exit card can show you a special fight room. In this case, you're in a crypt, and you've got the portal just appearing in the back. Honestly, kind of cool. Alright, this is going to be good. When you hit level 30, after this... What did I lose? A will of the gods? It has finally come to this. I am tired. It has been too long. Yet life... Life will not let the candle be snuffed. I want to know what lies beyond that door. Yet, I will not go easily. 
that clip has played before, but at level 30, you get the Deep Delver achievement to reach level 30 in Endless Mode. You probably get the idea from watching this video now. At first, Endless Mode is rather easy, so you can just kind of fuck around. You don't have to worry too much about losing health, and your gains are quite good. But as you keep going down, your gains become smaller and smaller. And if you haven't accumulated enough equipment and enough effects or blessings, you'll end up losing 50% of health, 33% of health, just 50 health outright. Pain cards will be that bad. And you need to just go on, gain as much as possible, as fast as possible. Right now, I'm in a sort of okay position. I can't actually remove any of these curses, and apparently I can't buy any blessings here. I have ways of surviving. I haven't encountered all the equipment. The shops haven't let me. Look at that list of curses and blessings here. It's obscene. Soljum is back. This is the third time this run, and the food cost is 20. We are getting rid of a Ratman lethality. Is that... A brand new curse. The deeper you go, the harder things become. I'm, I'll be honest, this is probably going to be the end of me. Blighted is a curse that admittedly I've hardly ever seen, but as you can see, it's bad. There is an armor that gives the same non-heal effect, but not being able to heal when you take a lot of damage and when you have pain cards will kill you. I don't know whether to be surprised that you're clumsy enough to have accumulated 10 curses or impressed that you've done it and still survived. This might be it. I keep saying that, but... It was bound to happen. Dead. And with an artifact unused. Perhaps that might have saved you. The rats will find you and gnaw upon your bones. Lovely. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish here. You got to see Iron Hunger and how it interacts with food. And in some ways, how it makes a run pretty easy. And in some ways, it makes it very difficult. It depends on whether your start is lucky or not. We recovered from a very, very bad health situation. The blade we got that we kind of stole from the funeral ended up carrying us quite far, as did the shield. And in the end... We recovered our health and then some before the array of curses and the loss of equipment gradually did us in. And in the end, Blighted got us. And through all of this, we actually did quite well for ourselves. We got many rings in our inventory. We got 10 blessings at once. We got many success or huge success cards in a single session, and we reached level 30 in endless mode, which is a massive milestone because you noticed around level 20, things start getting really tough. That's a lot of gold, a lot of equipment cards, a lot of things defeated. Back so soon. I knew you would not falter. Eh. Dealer quips aside. Thanks so much for watching. 
this endless mode run on the Iron Hunger Fate.